finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict. If you're new, thank you for checking out this video. Please consider subscribing. If you're a return viewer, thank you so much. We're going to take a look at this 65 Lincoln Continental convertible and do a breakdown of this listing review, which is out there right now on eBay, as you can see on your screen. Um, I do want to let you know that if you go to LincolnAttic.com, you can buy some merchandise. I have a few shirts left. I have stickers. And you can also find information on how to listen to the podcast. Lincoln Attic Podcast is free. You can listen on Podbean, uh, Android or iPhone, or you can go to the pre-installed Apple Podcasts app and uh, search Lincoln Attic. So check that out. Now, before we get started, I did want to give a quick update. This, uh, I believe, was the last listing review I did, a 64 Lincoln Continental convertible. I had, ironically, uh, on the 64 that sold on June 13th, I had went a little low on my guess, and um, this one actually went over six figures. So I kind of went with my gut on this one, and I thought that it was going to hit 110000 because this was a nice car, and you could see here 85000 Uh Now, if we could believe the commenters, uh, I may have been right, but this guy, Whiskey Joe, I think has chimed in on a couple of these cars, and uh, he goes on to say that he was going to bid, uh, he needs to start bidding on a computer, he says, versus his phone because he was going to bid 110000 and then he apparently offered the buyer a hundred and ten, which the guy could have made quote twenty five thousand in thirty minutes. Um, not sure how true that is, but I will tell you this: this was a nice car. When we really broke it down, we kind of uh, I was able to to get past you know some of these awesome photos here. You know, a lot of times these are kind of what I call lipstick on a pig, but this car certainly wasn't that. You know, you look at how nice this interior is and. You can go back and watch that video, but certainly this was a nice car. And um, $85,000, is a lot of money, but we're continuing to see the value on these cars go up. So I think someone got a really nice one. All right, uh, let's jump into the 65. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to a quick presentation I put together, and I'll show you uh, the presentation. The number one thing, I try to start with a positive, and let's do that. There's a ton of photos. So when you click on full-size photos, uh, it'll jump you over here, and there's almost 80 photos, which is fantastic. So that's a that's a win. The I guess my biggest grief with this listing is there's just not a lot of information. And that's one thing I like about Bring a Trailer, although they're not a sponsor of this channel in any way. We have continued to see from Bring a Trailer, you know, they go and they break down, um, you know, the VIN information or the door tag rather and things like that. Um, they often will include or require videos and things such as that. And of course, eBay, you know, they just want you to list and sell and move on. But if we jump over to my quick presentation, um, we'll take a look here. Now, I listed the date as 8-4. That's the time of this recording. Uh, here's a screenshot from my spreadsheet, and we can see in 65, uh, they were introduced in September of 64, which was typical, and you basically had a production run from August 64 to July of 65. We can see the sedans, there were 36,824 produced, and that was an increase of just under 4,000 over the previous year. It's a lot more than the convertibles. Uh, of course, convertibles, 3356, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, those uh, actually increased only 28 over 64, which uh, 64, there were um, 3,328 uh, produced. Now, the listing details, it's kind of what I refer to as like a staff copy paste. You know, a lot of times, whether it's the owner of this business or, you know, he's got someone or she has someone that just kind of lists their stuff, they kind of did a copy paste. And this was um, on, this is on eBay, you'll see. Now, they did make a mistake. The, um, I bolded this four door vert. They mentioned it was a two door car. Obviously, it's not that. And if we look at, the um, the VIN information as well as the door plate. 
basically here's what we're, we're looking at. We know it's a convertible. We can see from the photos, but I broke all this down. So 74A is the convertible. The C, uh, they call it Ivy Gold, but it's uh, Persian Gold Metallic. Again, that's typical. Uh, folks will often just look at the car and say, oh, it's an Ivy Gold color, but it's Persian Gold Metallic, which was a new color, 465, so it's a little unique. I think that's a cool thing about it. The trim is 88, so that's gold. You have 06L, so remember the L here stands for the month. So if you count those out or you can just off the top of your head, you know L is December and then 06 is the day. So December 6th of 1964, and I know you, you're going, hey, it's a 65. But the reason why I put this here is if we jump back and you look at the 65, it ran. So they produced them, right? They have to start producing them prior to the 65 year for that model. So from August of 64, you have August, so September, October, November, December, basically uh, just under uh, or just about four months into the production year, this car was produced, you know, as they were getting ready to roll into 65, you know, the, the actual year. Jacksonville 23 is the DSO. This car is in Ocoee, Florida. And my assumption would be I don't see a lot of 23 DSOs, I, you know, just in what I do here on YouTube. But more than likely, my guess is this car has remained in Florida for its existence. The axle is typical information here, and the trans is the twin range multi drive. Now, I did go and I broke down the VIN, which they did provide, um, or we'll actually see it in the eBay listing. So basically, I pasted it here, I pasted it up here as well, and um, ignore this. I put no photo, but I was able to find a photo here of that. So basically the five, which is the first digit is stands for five as in 65, the assembly plant. It is, um, although these codes, you know, are different up here, um, in the VIN, the eight, six stands for four door convertible. The N is the engine code. So that's the four thirty. There is a low compression, um, option, but you rarely see that the last, uh, the last digits that always begin with a four, so you have one, two, three, four, five, and then with the four is the sixth digit. So there's always going to be a four um, here, uh, which you see, and then you have 12,709. That's the consecutive unit number. And in this case, that is the 12,709th vehicle um, of this production run built. And you got to remember, if we go back to the spreadsheet, there's a total of 40,220 or 230. That's sedans, convertibles, and the few limos that were produced for that model year. So you can see slide two um, if we go back. But basically, it's the 12,709 built. Okay, so what do I like about this one? Uh, let's jump back over to the eBay listing and um, basically, when, like I said, when you go down here, um, you're going to be able to click and uh, view full-size photos, and we can kind of scroll through here. I'll just give you um, a quick rundown of what you're kind of seeing here. In 65, one unique thing I don't talk a lot about is on the deck lid, uh, basically the trim, I think it's called a sail a piece here or sail panel, I think is what my friend Tony always refers to it as on his parts cars. But this piece on 64 is is not here on 65. And that just was a design change. Of course, you have the iconic uh, one year only, the cages, if you will, uh, that are on these taillights. These taillights remain the same from 61 to 65, except for in 65, it appears the same, but you have this cage that was added. You also have the different bumper inserts. So for 64, I sell those um, that are replicated in billet aluminum, and they have a checkered pattern, I guess you could call it. In 65, I also sell these where there's machined grooves uh, into these uh, bumper inserts, and then you can go back and pinstripe if you want the black. But something that's unique to 65, again, is the cages um, on these taillights. The uh, deck lid does not have this trim piece, and the bumper inserts are different. Those are a, a few of the aesthetics. The other thing that's different, as I've always said, is on 
a side view like you're looking at here is you see that um, you can see the the front turn signal. So in from the side, 64, 65 look almost identical. Uh, you can usually look here and you go, boom, it's a 65 taillight. You also, this is really the, the kind of the tell is um, the front fender has the turn signal in it. So I always look here. If I see this, I know it's a 65. And that's the easiest way to tell the difference in 64 and 65. Now, what I want to do is jump back over here and we'll go through this and try to get this going. Okay, so desirable year. A lot of people love 65. To me, I, I'm a big fan of 64, 65. They're very similar. You basically had, which we looked at, uh, 3,356 built just under seven grand. And if you um, do the math on that with some of the different tools online, um, I do this for each of these videos. And as of today, that's equivalent to almost $66,000. So very expensive car in its day. And if you want to compare that, go and look at what some of the Impalas and things like that, which by the way, I'm a big Impala fan, but go and look at some of the prices of an average car almost $7,000 was a lot back in 65. The color, I love the Persian gold metallic. It's a bit different. You don't see it a lot. Um, and I just like that. Uh, and we're talking about the pros here, what I like about this listing or this car. It's mostly original. It does compete uh, appear very complete. Uh, the car appears, we'll see in more photos, to be well-driven. So that's good. In my opinion, I'd rather have something that's been driven and enjoyed versus sitting for five or 10 or 50 years. The body seems straight, straight. There's no dings or dents in the bumper from what I could tell. The undercarriage photos were included. You guys know, I talk about the importance of that. These are the unibody cars from 58 through the late 60s uh, through 69. Basically, these unibody construction, you don't want a car that's rusty. That's for sure. It is an AC or air-conditioned car, so that adds value. Uh, there's a dual master cylinder. There's the normal deck lid woes. However, looking at the photos, it doesn't look horrible. It's kind of standard um, on these cars. The crossbar is installed, which is something that John Cashman always preached in 64, 65. You have to do. We'll look at that. The interior in the uh, trunk appears complete, which is not always the case. And overall... I would say this appears to be uh, a nice survivor car. If we jump back over here and we look at kind of the engine bay, there's a few things going on here. Like, for instance, this steel braided line is something you're never – I've never seen anybody use it for an AC line. Um, uh, my guess is the AC does not work, and I'm working on a video – Hopefully, we'll be finished soon talking about the upgrade that I did in my 65 with Blair uh, Farmer. And uh, we basically end up, you know, you end up replacing all these lines. Uh, if this if this system had never, um, if it was always sealed, or let's say there was some air conditioned work, which we know was done because of this being changed, you know, you, you could try to put refrigerant in and um, see if it would work. But certainly, if I was looking to restore this or kind of do any kind of work and put some money into it, I, I would just start replacing a lot of this. Uh, but again, more to come on that. We could see it has the dual master cylinder, and this is typical. Um, these, the, they kind of have like a patina rust to them. Um I made this mistake, I think in my 64, I forgot to paint it before I installed it. And these will typically just kind of garner a little bit of rust like this. It's like a surface rust. It, it's not, you know, anything bad. Uh, but typically you can get in here with a paintbrush and maybe some POR 15. And you can paint over this and it will actually make it look a lot nicer. This is typically how I would say a survivor car is going to look. Um, over all these years, you know, nothing certainly super nice. Uh, something that, that I uh, notice is this tray, if you will, that goes around the battery. It kind of just makes sure that it doesn't move. Um, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, hypothetically, but, um, oftentimes these are gone, you know, someone took it out to replace the battery. They never put it back, whatever. But what we can see here is it is here. 
Um, I always suggest too, if you have an opportunity to be able to kind of move this battery around, um, I believe from the factory, there was the hold down that was down in this area in front of the battery. You never really see those. But, you know, if I was looking at this car in person, I would just kind of like pick up this, you know, and try to look under the battery, look over here, look over here. It doesn't look bad at all, but you always want to make sure on these cars that there's not a crazy amount of rust, um, especially in this area. Now, typically you'll see some nastiness and that can be fixed, but you just want to make sure it's, you know, not too bad. Uh, this is again, there's no need to be doing all this right here. Um, and then this, this line, even though I'm not like a crazy purist, this steel braided line, just more is, I believe a power steering type line. There's a lot of different uses for these and I've used them before, um, on different projects in the past, but it just doesn't need to be there. So I would replace all that. Uh, we can see here a couple things I like to look at is on these little side dash pieces. A lot of times this stuff is gone because someone's went in there and they don't put things back. But when I look at a survivor car like this one, I'm looking at a lot of things and I'm seeing all these little pieces are here. That's telling me like this car is complete, although it may not be the most beautiful version of a 65 Lincoln Continental convertible. Certainly it could be cleaned up and or restored. Uh, it is hard to tell from this photo, but it does have the AM FM. So the FM option in the dash um, right here, you can kind of see where it flops from FM. You're more than likely not going to end up using the factory stuff, but it is nice to have. That is one feature that we see on it. Again, I've said this before in 64 um, to adjust your clock, you had a little cable that looked like a speedometer cable that hung down and just beneath the dash, you'd have to twist it. In 65, that changed. So instead of having to lean over and twist that little deal that was right down here, they basically changed it. So in 65, you will see this. There is a little insert hole here, and you just twist it right here. I think this is, you know, it's an extra hole that Lincoln added. But I think from a aesthetic perspective, it's just a lot easier to adjust your clock here. So I like to point that out. Uh, we can see it does still have the the front seat belts. I think in 65, they all had seat belts. I can't remember if 65 was an option. I know when 67 comes around, you start to have new laws and things like that. What is more rare is in 65 to see the rear seat belts. So um, th that was an option. I know off the top of my head. When I say a car is kind of well-driven, well-worn, you know, you can see the door panels. You know, you can see... That this thing, um, although the seats to me are in great condition, you can just tell it's it's kind of, you know, it has that dinginess, uh, kind of driver quality. And uh, like I said, I like that. Um, so these pieces here, so you talk about a complete car. These are getting very hard to find. And these two plastic vinyl pieces, if you will, can be very expensive. Okay. So when I'm looking at a car and I'm going, wow, everything is here. That is a huge plus, and a lot of people are looking for a car that they don't have to go start sourcing individual parts. Now, certainly, if you were going to do something custom, you know, a lot of this can be just covered uh, from a stereo interior type shop. But I like seeing all this stuff, including, of course, you've got everything here in the trunk. And we also see what a lot of people refer, refer to as the toilet seat. This pops up, and then you can, you know, take out the spare tire and take off the cover and all that. We can see the normal little bit of craziness that happens on these deck lids. I won't go into too much detail there, but if you actually look up here, it's in really, really nice condition. This is the bar that I talked about that John Cashman always preaches uh, that needs to be installed in 6465. I actually have a video on my channel on how to do that. Um, although this one is welded in, you do not have to weld it in. So if you're a welder or your friend is, certainly you can put a couple welds on this and you'll be good to go, but you don't have to go to that length. Um, I have a solution, again, in the video that costs you $20 maybe, and you can do it in about uh, probably 20 minutes. This is uh, a huge win, and you guys saw that I mentioned this. To be able to have access to a lift or have a friend or in this case you know, a shop that throws it up on a lift – this is huge because um, this is going to help dispel a lot of questions. Um, you know, you see the dinginess of it, but this is how these cars are, especially one like this that's well-driven. Um, you can certainly get in here and start to get crazy and do, 
you know, put this thing on a rotisserie and, and, and redo and scrape all this. But all of this stuff here is all kind of that factory look and feel, right? So that's how they all look. You're typically going to see a lot of oil leaks on these things and whatnot. And they're not maybe the prettiest underneath, but um, it depends on how far you want to take it. Uh, this, I do believe, was painted black at some point. I don't believe these are black. I think they're more of like a... Um, uh, you know, a normal uh, raw metal color finish, if I remember correctly. You guys can keep me honest on that. But certainly it looks like there was some pra spray paint used at different times in here. We do see that it has the three ports. So you have one, two, three. The easiest way to tell is that there's not the two screws up here. It does look like um, clean or newer uh, bolt screws. So more than likely this thing was rebuilt and uh, that's a good thing. If we go through here, I'm just going to try to kind of wrap this up because I know these videos get a little bit long. Again, you're kind of seeing some of the same things. I will say this, these landing pads, if you will, when the top is down, I've said this before, these are typically gone or missing. So it's cool that all of this stuff is here and that makes it a lot easier if you're going to maybe enjoy this car a little bit. Uh, cruise it around, and then maybe down the road, 5, 10, 15 years, you're going to do a full restoration. You've got everything. Uh, inside the deck lid, uh, typically these can be very bad. Uh, you can see a little bit of craziness going on here, but nothing, nothing compared to what we've seen. Um, you'll see a little bit of the bubbling as well up here, and uh, it looks standard. This is the original motor and what we refer to as the hockey puck. Uh, there is an upgraded motor that uh, works really well. Uh, you'll spend several hundred dollars on it. There's going to be more on my channel talking about this, which is a key component of the convertible top. Um, and, you know, sometimes this breaks in here and there are people that, that make and produce these parts. Uh, but again, I'll go into that in more detail uh, in the future. Now, um, we're seeing more undercarriage photos and the exhaust is probably going to have to be not probably, I mean, let's be honest, the exhaust is going to have to be redone, but that's kind of a standard maintenance type thing. Okay. So that's enough there. There's where I got the VIN. Uh, I want to kind of wrap this up because again, these get long. So, um, what I don't like about the car or more specifically the listing. Okay. There's no videos of the car running. So again, with bring a trailer, I love how they kind of require and or ask like, Hey, send us the videos. We'll upload them. So on and so forth. But we really need to see the car running. Um, you know, even if you are selling a car, put someone in the passenger seat and have them just film. Hey, we're driving up and down the street. We're stopping. We're going that type of thing. There's no description of how the car runs or if it has been sitting for any length of time. So I didn't spend a lot of time going through the description, but it's kind of a copy paste. There's there's not a lot of information like has this thing, you know, been driven for 60 years and, you know, or has it been sitting? Uh, there's no indication of the windows or the rear auto drop windows work. You know how important that is. If you were to buy this car and then the windows don't go up. Or more than likely, they're all going to be slow if they haven't been cleaned and gone through. Uh, some of them just may not work. Uh, you have four windows. You have two vent windows, so that's six. And then you also have the rear auto drops. So you have eight kind of opportunities there. Do they all go up? Do they all go down? Do the auto drops work? Does the top work at all? Now, our assumption is that it works because we see in the photos, you know, they put the top you know, to get the photos in the trunk and the deck lid. So more than likely it does. But again, feedback to you, if you're ever looking to sell a car, my, my objective when we're selling a car or when we're helping someone in those rare occasions, now that I help um, other sell a vehicle, let's do everything we can to, to, to dispel questions, right? If we can answer 99.9% .9 of what we think people are going to ask, then we're going to spend less time in email and direct messages and going back and forth. Uh, does the, uh, was the timing gear upgraded? So again, these timing gears on these cars, it is suggested that you change those and upgrade those. The amp gauge is the same and 64, 65, it has to be upgraded. It has to be bypassed or, 
Uh, the other solution is obviously upgrade to like an aftermarket gauge. But, um, you know, typically, you know, we want to know, hey, was any work done to the amp gauge? The steel braided AC line I mentioned, and I would like to see more picks uh, under the doors. So, um, you know, in some of these uh, last few photos I didn't really go to, you know, you see a little bit in here and it looks okay. But, you know, if I was in person, I would want to get up underneath here. And again, it looks all right. I'd like to see more photos up underneath here. Uh, but from what I can tell and what I've experienced, you know, kind of being around these cars, it looks pretty solid, to be honest. That's my gut feeling. But that was the last photo. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming back here. I hope that you find value. Maybe you learned something about these cars. Leave a comment is all I ask if you can, even if it's just a thumbs up emoji. That helps the channel, um, and we're going to continue. I'm going to continue uh, you know, covering this content because it's just stuff I like to talk about. In closing, check out Lincoln Attic Podcast, and I guess I should say this. They have a make offer. This car is at $55,000, we'll call it. I mean, the prices we've seen, you guys saw I went to bring a trailer and showed this one just sold for 85 which was a super, super nice car. And then you go, well, where's the middle ground? I mean, fifty five isn't a crazy asking price. Now, I don't know what they would take for it, but certainly if I was looking to buy this, my last piece would be just reach out, get more information, get more photos, go check it out. If you're near Okoe, if you know someone that is. Uh, you know, reach out on the Facebook groups. Oftentimes people for a small fee will go check out a car for you. Stay on the rise and have a safe weekend. We out of here. 